How many know the Lord has great things in store for you? Look at your neighbor and say, great things. God has so, God so many great things in store for me. Can't you see that? God has so many great things in store for me. Can't you see? God has so many great things in store. Can't you see?
strength to strength, the power to power, up to your might, your power, your spirit, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Evangelist Lorraine Sims, would you welcome her this moment? Praise the Lord, everybody. 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 Praise the Lord, Fellow saints, the house of faith in the worthy name of Jesus. Praise God. It's good to be here. Amen. Amen. Is it good to be here? Yes. Praise God. We've not gathered for anything that's been negative. We've gathered to come to praise the Lord and to give Him glory. Please um, forgive me. I just opened my back and realized I've left my glass. But we are going to still worship and we're still going to praise. If everyone can stand. Get in the atmosphere for worship. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Let us imagine we glorify His name. I believe everyone knows that song. And we're going to sing it to the glory of God. You know, we are in a football match today. I've taken Jane to one some years ago. And when we went, the atmosphere was euphoric. Why? Because they were all in one mind. They were charged and they had one aim. And so today we come with one mind and that is to give God glory. Amen. Praise God. I just want to glorify, glorify your name.
Father God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I love you, Lord. Oh! 
sister of the chief angelic. Hallelujah. Had it not been that the Lord was on our side, yes. we wouldn't be here celebrating 12 years. Oh, God, that's good. All for your glory, Lord. Hallelujah. I wasn't here 12 years ago, but many of you were here then. And there are many who were here who are no longer with us. But we value their labor. We are standing on the shoulders of giants. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We didn't just come like this, but giants stood before us. Glory to God. I do welcome you all. And at this moment, I'd ask our senior pastor, Pastor Andre Sims Morgan, please to come forward and welcome you. Amen. 
is Ms. Joyner from Dundee Road and Arts for You. Amen. Evangelist from Arms from Dundee Road and Arts for You. Hallelujah. Minister Green, Triumphant, we thank God for you. Apostle Deborah Harrison, Amen. Gospel Express, Evangelist Lorraine from right here. Glory to God. Amen. Thank God for you and you and everybody. Amen. We bless the Lord. Amen. Our two of our latest uh, most recent converts are here and they're working real hard. Amen. And thank God for the Jada. Come on, stand up, stand up. Come on, turn around and see you. I boast about it because yes. uh, God saved him. Yes. God filled him with the Holy Ghost. Yes. And he was baptized in water. Glory to God. And he is reaching his generation with the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's sending out messages, daily messages, daily, daily messages on TikTok. And he is reaching his generation for Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody, give God a praise for that. And we thank God. She she came in here on August last year, amen. And she's never turned back since. And she got baptized end of January, Sister Lee McLean. I bless the Lord for her, amen. And she just. Amen. You know when you position people, amen. You don't have to, you know when you're the pastor, you worry about everything. Amen. But you just tell them that's your job, that's your role. Amen. She takes the computer home or and just types up the song. She took home the hymn book and she typed up everything. And she comes back and she said, Pastor, here is the presentation. Amen. So I give God thanks for her. I give God thanks to everyone. Amen. My son that's growing on the drums. Amen. Thank God. You know, he told me last week, he said, Daddy, I'm not playing. You know, I'm not playing. I've been playing since I was two. I'm not playing. Amen. I told him, well, you're going to have to play because I didn't call nobody else. Amen. But we thank God for him. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank God for the Ethan. Amen. Come on. Come on. Tricked up a child in the way that you go. When he's old, he shall not be part of it. Amen. And I thank God for each and every one of you, all of you. Amen. Our pastor Ruth that assists me and stands. Amen. When I'm not able, she's here. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 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 I thank God for you, everybody. Missionary Robinson, I honor you also. Amen. You know why I, I, I take the time to honor these? Because when we first started in 2012, we used to have service on Friday nights. And I used to take the van and pick up the saints from Birmingham. Yes. Many of them have gone on home to be with the Lord. Yes. And there's only a few left. Yes. Amen. So we thank God for them and we cherish them while they are still here. Praise God. Life is fragile. And, and you're here today. And it's not even gone tomorrow anymore. You're gone today. My grandfather passed away in January, and he was on the phone on the Thursday, on the morning, and by the afternoon, he was gone. So what I'm saying to you is, appreciate life. We may not have everything that we want, but we surely do have everything that we need, because God said he would provide our needs according to his riches in glory. And I'm just glad that I'm in the house of God, and I'm just grateful that I'm in my right mind, I'm in my perfect senses. If, if I followed the doctors, they would have given you so much medication and it gives you side effects and it cures one thing, but it creates something else. But I thank God for the blood of Jesus because the blood of Jesus can do anything and everything what the tablets and the medication cannot do. I bless God for you all. It's been a journey. 
It's been a journey. Those of you that are ministers, those of you that are pastors, will know it's a it's been a journey. Sometimes when you come to church and it's you one, you gotta pray, come on, sing, come. and do everything yeah. and go home. Yes. My grandfather taught me. He said before he died, he said when you preach, preach like there's five hundred people. Amen. Even when you see two people, he said preach because the word must be released. And even though people may not hear it in here, but the sound goes out because sound travels, you know. So even now we're in here, we may not see them, but people are down the street hearing and listening to what we are saying. And that's why we must preach the word of God. Instant in season, out of season, rebuke and reprove with all long suffering. I'll tell you something, it's been hard. It's been a battle. You know, dealing with ill health and dealing with church and having a secular job. It is sometimes, but with God on your side, you can make it. And I was reading in Zechariah, I'm not the preacher, I'm going to sin. I was reading in Zechariah chapter 4. He said, do not despise the day of small beginnings. Because just because it starts small, doesn't mean that it's going to remain small. Because I serve great, big, wonderful God. And what did he say? One planted and the other watered. But God is the one that gives us the, gives the increase. If we could save people, we would save everybody. We would save our friends, our family, and even our enemy. But the fact is, we can't save nobody. But all we can do is to preach the word. All we can do is to release the word. And while we're releasing the word, love people. Am I right about it? Love people. Because when you love people, it covers a multitude of sin. I'm coming here today. And I thank you for coming. I thank you all for making the journey to come out this evening to be here with us. We just come to worship. We just come to worship. We don't have no set agenda. We don't have no set program. But all we do is we come to worship. Because it's not by our might, neither is it by our power, but it is by the Spirit of God. God bless you. Back to Pastor Ruth. Amen.
But on Zion shall never move, but abide it forever. For as the mountain and the hill encamped about Jerusalem, so the Lord encamped about them that fear him. Thank God for another year. Amen. We can come to build and to worship. Amen. Is another church closed up? Yes, sir. Amen. But thank God. But if you in Zion, that desire to hold the hope yeah. for I am coming. Jesus signals to you. Wave the answer back to him. By thy grace be made. Thank God for the grace of God. Hallelujah. But Jesus died for our sin, but rose for our justification. And being justified by faith, we are peace with him. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank God he has been my life. Many years, crying and crying, getting very tired. Mm. But thank God, the, the journey is not finished yet. No. Amen. And we never started to stop at the road. Come on now, come on. We started to finish the journey. Yes. Yes. Amen. And Father, I have fight a good fight. Yes. I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. Yes. Edgeworth is a crown of life awaiting me. Not only me, only. But to everyone who loves the people. Amen. My brother and sister, mm -hmm. sit down in jail yes, and put on your seatbelt. Yes. Hallelujah. Great church rock, rock in it. Yes. Hallelujah. Because the labor and will come. Let the church praise the Lord. Yes. Let the church praise the Lord. Yes. Let the church praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We will always give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Young man, I remember when you come up here first. Amen. They asked me to bless you, and then we couldn't believe the way for it. But God Almighty, and thank God for the power of God that I'm giving you, man. Oh, hallelujah. We come here when He exalts us from the Word of God. Hallelujah. And we pray to you. Amen. Maybe young man and young woman, God Almighty bless you. We can hardly keep up with you, but holy folk. Hallelujah. We are here today and gone today, but as long as you are alive, give God a clue. And keep on the narrow road. And I'm not only talking to you, I'm talking to every young man and every young woman. 
who will come to know Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Notice your friend outside. The way they act and the way they believe. But thank God we have an anchor. That keep the soul. Stay back and show. Brother Peter Lord. Pass it to the rock. We can move. Jesus is the rock of ages. Jesus is our high place. Jesus is our strong tower. He's a rock in the building. He's a shelter in the time of Psalm. And when he sees that I all alone my soul give away, he is my hope. And he is our stay. And him the solid rock we stand. Hold on. Deliver unto the come. God bless you, honey. to have a word, in, notably our two, our two missionaries, yes? Um, if you would come, my sister, and then our beloved missionary, afterwards come and say hello, do what you want to do, glory be to God. Uh, we thank the Lord for the men and for the women, but I want yeah. to, those who are here, amen? That's right. You know, when you are doing some gardening, you have to move away the stones and turn over the, the dirt and get the weeds out. You are here! And we thank you. Would you join us, please, um, Sister Blake, and then afterwards, uh, our beloved missionary. Please give her a hand.
always here and look at him today. Yeah. When I look at him rejoicing yeah. and giving God praise, yeah. our neighbor is not in vain because here he is brought up here and worshiping God. Give him his life. Continue, my son. Continue. The Lord Oh, 
for Jesus, the blessed Savior, who will lead us on the way we go. Yes. It is an amazing day to be here today, just to celebrate with Pastor Andre. Yes. Truly, I was one of ministers here with him. Yes. But time move on and time come on again. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. But God is so marvelous because, yes. you know, David said, Behold, O good. Yes. That's how pleasant it is for brethren to be together in unity. Uh -huh. Oh, praise the Lord. And I can see the unity is very, very rich and tangible tonight. Oh, praise the Lord. So everyone has a right to talk in this unity. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. But looking further along the line, the Bible tells me about Abraham and his nephew Lot. Yes. Oh, praise the Lord. The start was very wonderful. Oh, praise the Lord. And they had great things in common. But one day, hallelujah, the cattle that they had begin to expand. Oh, praise the Lord. And they didn't have enough land. Oh, praise the Lord. Yeah. To accommodate both. Hallelujah. So there was a strife arise. Oh, praise the Lord. And, you know, Abraham was so unique. He called that. And he said, look, you are my nephew. And he said, let there be no strife between us. Oh, praise the Lord. And he said, look. And he looked and he said, okay, I'm going to give you the first part. You choose what you want to choose. Oh, praise the Lord. And he chose the best part of the vineyard. Oh, praise the Lord. And after he chose, he didn't realize that what he chose was going to get him in problem. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he had to run and leave it. Mm -hmm. Oh, praise the Lord. But God is so marvelous. You see, a wise man don't speak much. Mm -hmm. Abraham was very wise. But he view, hallelujah, in the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Why that view from a physical eyesight? Yes. So what he see, hallelujah, he accepted. Yes. Oh, praise the Lord. But Abraham, he view through the spirit of the heart. Of the lens of God. And when he looked, hallelujah, he even seen the sand of the seashore, what wood belongs to him. Oh, praise the Lord! Oh, praise the Lord! So I'm saying to you, Pastor, tonight, hallelujah, it doesn't matter what happened. Oh, praise the Lord! In the past and the future, but let us try be, oh, hallelujah, to the work that you're doing, because they're doing unto God for a purpose. Hallelujah! And because of that, oh, when you validate it, hallelujah, the word of God said, oh, what was it again? Not a might, not a power, but by, 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 not by your spirit, but by the spirit of the true and living God. Because God is a spirit, and then the first God must, must, must. Because God 
is so excellent for every situation. Hallelujah. Yes, right. Sickness will come. Mm -hmm. Sickness will rock your body. Mm -hmm. But in the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus prayed in you. Yes. Hallelujah. So you have the power within you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And you can dictate the sickness. Mm -hmm. yes. You can say sickness in the name of Jesus. Right. Whoever you are, oh, yeah. wherever you come from, yeah. listen to me. Yeah. My body is a temple right. of the true and living God. Right. There's no room for you. Right. Hallelujah. Because God dwells in a clean vessel. Yes. Oh, praise the Lord. So any unclean spirit come in, yes. put on your antenna. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Put on your antenna. Yes. Hallelujah. And begin, hallelujah, to do a surveillance in the atmosphere. Yes. In the atmosphere. Yes. Your radar is ready. Yes. So anything coming, yes. it should not, it will not pass and come in your body. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. So when you're on the alert yes. and you're ready, God Almighty, it's not our might. Come on. The power is in us. The power is in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Start using the power. Hallelujah. Because if you don't use the power, you will lose the power. Hallelujah. Jordan. Jordan. I always ask. Always. Pastor. For you. And if I do not see Pastor. I stopped and I think. And I said, Pastor, mm -hmm. where's my dancer? <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Hallelujah. And these two lads, honest, if I didn't see them tonight, mm -hmm. I would not be happy. Mm -hmm. Because I came specifically not to see Pastor, <laughs> not to see anybody else. But I came to see these two little guys because, honest, they were so challenging in my time, Man. especially Jaden. Mm. Oh my God, he was everywhere, everywhere. And every time Pastor said to him, sit. <laughs> Hold it, please. <laughs> sit. Mm. But he was everywhere. And look, God bless him so amazingly. Yeah. 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 It is so good, but I don't believe every young lad tonight should take a pattern. All of his folk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the Bible said, young man. I write unto you because you are strong. Hallelujah. So you are strong, but Andre is decreasing. Hallelujah. But take counsel from him. Because he can give good counseling. Hallelujah. And when you give good counseling, you take it on board and use it to your ability to exploit. Because great thing is he that is in you than he that is in the world. May God bless you all. Be strong and be courageous in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Father God, 
in the mighty name of Yahshua, we give you thanks, we give you praise. We thank you, Lord, for another privilege. We're the last thing, Father, we have brought us together, oh God. This moment, Lord, and as if people stand, oh yes. God, in that which they have in their hands, oh God, and in their heart. Mm -hmm. Father God, we have to bless it, oh God, multiply it in the mighty name of Yeshua the Christ. Mm -hmm. Father, we we'll pray that we go further on to your work yes, in your divine name. Yes. Father, we thank you right now, thank you. mighty God, yes. because you know who you are the one who give it, oh Father God. Mm -hmm. And as you give that to us, mighty God, it shall be, oh God, bless, good measure, press and run over, yes. mighty God. And Father, that reason we thank you and we give willingly tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, help us, we pray, as we give unto you, my God, my God, that our heart will bless our God, God, and the storehouse will not be empty in the mighty name of Joshua. Father, we thank you one more time. Jesus, and we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks to the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you. And praise God. I think Sister Lee's trying to find it. If I can just track it then. We stand please to worship. Is there a mountain in your way to doubt and fears about? Press on, oh hear the Spirit say, there's not a child come down, not one not one Oh, my God. 
praise God. God has given you so many tools. Yes. He's given you so much in your life. Yes. Where are we are glad that we forget? Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. We do not forget yes. things. Yes. Sometimes we forget yes. how great God is. Yes. That he went down into the grave and he came back. Yes. Praise God. We're in the season. We're coming to that season. Yes, praise God. And it's the same way where I can imagine we plant a seed. You plant a church. Praise God. And it won't take three days to sprout a tree. It takes a good time to sprout a tree. Praise God. I know me and my dad. Praise God. We like to work in the garden. And it's years ago now that we plant one pear tree and we, and we plant one plum tree. And the pear tree began to fruit after a couple of years. And the plum tree just sprout and grow and grow and grow. So you have to prune it. Sometimes it takes time. It takes time. The ground has to be right. The season has to be right. The weather has to be right to get good fruit. Praise God. And that first fruit that we got from that pear tree tastes like something. Tastes like mush. Like water. But praise be to God. The pot was seasoned, the ground was seasoned. Yes. And it's as we carry on, yes. praise God, as we go forward for God, yes. that things get better. Yes. He never said that day done, yes. you're going to be able to come up and stand in front of people and talk. Awesome. Praise God. <laughs> Jesus never, never said that you're going to get up and speak before thousands of people. Amen. Sometimes your ministry is bringing flowers into the house of God. Amen. Beautify the place. Amen. Praise God. Sometimes your job is to be here before anyone else is here. To open the door and to be the key. Amen. Praise God. That when people come, they can hear the sounds of Zion coming out of the window. Praise be to God. Amen. So in these small roles, you think that they're small, but they're big. Amen. They're great. Amen. Praise God. And if you do these small things, the Bible says, if I will give you small things and I will make you, if, if you're the faithful over the few things, if you're the ruler over many. So let's be smart in the small things. Let's edify ourselves in the small things. Let iron sharpen iron in the small things. Praise God that when it comes to a prime meeting, you don't need no one to spark you. But when it comes to a testimony service, you can jump up and shout, I am determined to hold that to the end. Praise God. We don't have to wait to get ready. But we are ready and waiting. You pray for me. And I ask that you continue to be a ministry in this location. Praise God, because you don't understand that it's so difficult these days to have a house like this. Amen. Come on now. A house that is well seasoned. Like, how many firecrackers in the house? Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. How many seasoned veterans do you have in the house? Yeah. Praise God. It's a blessing. Yeah. Truly a blessing. Yeah. Like I mentioned some days ago and all year is, praise God, saints. Yes. And that's the best that they have. Mm. But we have power. Yeah. Yeah. She's my study mate. Did you know? Yeah. Hallelujah. We're in the same class. Pastor Carl, God bless you. Would you come and greet the church? Followed by our beloved brother Jordan. And I wonder if I can put on you to give us a song afterwards, Minister Green. Is that okay? I'll try. <laughs> Pastor Carl, please come. Come
in the house of the Lord. Greetings to my presiding bishop, host pastor, greetings to all the ministers in Jesus' name. There's a song that's laid on my heart, so I wonder if I can just sing 
one verse of it and the chorus in Jesus name praise God what a wonderful change in my life has been born since Jesus came into my heart I give my soul for with God I am born since Jesus came into
to the house of God. Let the church praise the name of God. Hallelujah. All the scenes, if we look around, we can understand and we can see clearly there is confusion in every aspect of this world. In the government, law, you don't know where you stand in terms of law. But God is bringing that order into the house where he built. God said, Jesus said, upon this rock, I have built my church and the gates of hell never prevail against it. Some things have fell out of order. But today, from this day onwards, God is bringing back people back in order. Let the church praise the name of the Lord. Amen. That's how you reflect over the years. Um, I remember the times when we used to do four services on a Sunday. Amen. We used to be at Dudley Road. Then we used to come to Bilston. We used to go to Lodge Road. We used to go to Mount Shiloh on one Sunday. Amen. Just to be in the house of the Lord, it was a pleasure. And to build up God's kingdom. Amen. And when we used to come here, uh, I remember seeing healing take place. Yes. I remember seeing deliverance take place. I remember revivals breaking out. But the scripture and the topic today says, Greater are we going to expect from the Lord. Amen. Shall we praise the Lord? I remember the scripture that says he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. But guess what? It's not by our might. And it's not by our power. We are just vessels to be used by God. All we need to do is step the gap and let God use us and no matter what may come no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper so while we are going into the 13th year or the 13th tenure of this ministry let us expect greater greater miracles, greater worship, greater revival greater deliverance God is about to do Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
a great God. Great God. Hallelujah. Great God. Great God. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you. 
gathering of your people everywhere as we have come to worship you. Thank you for the words that have come forth, oh God, to strengthen us here. And I pray God, now as your servant is about to come forth with the word, I pray God that uh, flesh will be slain, self will die, in the name of Jesus. And as he stands, oh God, and he opens his mouth, you will fill it with words. Let him not speak, but you speak through him. Right now, in the name of Jesus, strengthen him right now and give us a receptive heart. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Say, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for our minister, Luke Francis. In Jesus' name. Clap your hands and receive him. Amen. 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 so worthy to be praised. Yes. Yeah. A privilege to be in the presence of God one more time. It's not something that we should take lightly. Yeah. 
So every time we get into the house of God, we should give God praise. Right? We should honor Him for everything that He has done. It's a privilege to be in this particular plot of ground one more time. And I oftentimes say, you know, there's not many places you can go where you have been taught a lot of things. Sometimes if you go to another church, oftentimes you find that, you know, you don't necessarily take part in what's going on. But I thank God for my friend and my brother, Pastor Andre Sims, who was obedient to the voice of God to plant, plant this plot of ground. And not only that, but as Minister Jordan was saying, many of us as young men, before we even got started in ministry, we're given an opportunity to serve in this church. And I oftentimes look at the fact of over the 12 years, we were here when everything did start. And I remember myself, Minister Jordan, Minister Adrian Moore, yeah. Pastor Courtney King, Brother Marcus Copeland, we used to come here on a Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, after our own services and then we would all jump in a car and go elsewhere and we would do three or four services, I'm not so sure about now. Um, but it was something to behold because in this church was where we got opportunities to serve. And now, look at what God has done. Amen! Amen. And I will say this publicly and I will say this openly. Thank God for you, Pastor Sims, because many pastors, many leaders do not invest in those younger than them, do not invest in the next generation. But I thank God for you because you saw something in some of all of us. Amen. And you gave us the opportunity to serve. Let me greet the presiding bishop, Bishop Farron, first assistant, Bishop Connery. To all of the ministers and the saints of God in the house, I greet you in the precious name of Jesus. I bring you also greetings from, well, my wife would have wanted to be here, but she was unable to come. But she sent her greetings and her congratulations on 12 years of ministry. But I also bring greetings from my presiding bishop and first lady bishop, uh, Dexter and Lady Alanda Edmund, who said congratulations. And, uh, he told me to tell you, he said, Sims, I'm still waiting on you, Sims, for you to come. <laughs> yeah, Sims knows what that means, but we thank God for him and he sends his greetings to you. And I don't wish to spend any length of time because I think there is enough word that has already gone out. But I just want to leave my little a thought that God gave me while I was thinking about this I was just sat there thinking if you grab your Bibles go with me to the book of 2nd Corinthians chapter number 4 2nd Corinthians chapter number 4 and I want to look at verse 7 to verse 10 and if you will just for the reading of these few verses if you would stand in reverence and honor to the word of God. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse seven to 10. But it simply says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life or soul of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. I want to use as a subject, and very quickly, if you would just help me talk to your neighbor, and just tell them, say, neighbor, Come on, talk to them. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. I'm not broken. I'm not broken. That's my subject. I'm not broken. I'm ready to say that. I was thinking about the 12 years that have passed while this ministry has been going. And 
I oftentimes look at, you know, within, well, within my own personal life, within the last 12 months, I've been looking at my life because if God spares my life next month, I will return 30 years old. And uh, I'm dreading it because nobody likes to leave their 20s. <laughs> but uh, I'm having to be, by the grace of God, I will be hitting 30 next month. But this last year I've been evaluating my life and I have been evaluating all of the things that I've been through. And every now and then I would advise that you do take stock of what you have been through in the last year. Because oftentimes we forget what we have been through. Oftentimes we skip over the fact that we have been through various different illnesses and various different challenges. And reality is, if we don't think of anything else, we should always be grateful and praise God because the truth is, a year ago, we did not have to make it to this point right now. And I have been more so aware of life because a friend of mine, a friend of ours actually, just went to celebrate her 40th birthday and passed away while on holiday. And in the suddenness of it, it just happened so quickly. And so I realized that we can be here today. And as Bishop Ferrin said, we can be gone today. We oftentimes used to say as we're here today and gone tomorrow. But the reality is we can be here today and we can be gone today. So if we be really honest, we ought to be thankful. Any time we have made it through another year. Oftentimes I look at, for example, the year 2000, where we were crossing over from 1999 into 2000. That year the church was packed because everybody thought that Jesus was coming back. And as soon as the clock struck midnight and they realized that Jesus had not come back, everybody invaded the churches and went to their various nightclubs. But I can guarantee you that there was probably somebody that was in church that night that did not see the coming of the Lord, but they met the Lord in another way. Because they left the church and probably ended up dying without realizing that life is so fickle. Every minute that passes, we must be very cautious with life. Because the reality is you only get one life. So when you have that one life and you have that one opportunity, the opportunity that is presented to you is not for you to live life recklessly, but it is for you to give God the glory and to give God the praise. But I looked through life and as I said, I've been looking at my life over the past year and I'll be honest with you, I have gone through my fair share of trouble. I've gone through my fair share of trial. I've gone through my fair share of disappointment. And if anybody had told me that when I started this Christian journey that it was going to be simple, if they had told me that then it was going to be straightforward and it was going to be a bed of roses, then I would have told them, by now, you are a liar. Mm -hmm. Because I have found out that the longer you serve God, the more trouble you're going to find. The more you go through is the more the enemy is going to try and come back to you at every time. And so I realize that trouble comes on every hand. But I want you to understand that trouble is not a bad thing. I would question if you as a believer are not troubled. I would look at your life and I would really determine whether you don't go through. If you don't go through trouble, I would really want you to really take stock of your life because I believe that the enemy only fights those who he knows are anointed. The enemy will only fight those who he knows are gifted. And so in order for him to stop you from using your anointing and your gift, he has to block you and has to cause trouble to try and take you out at every opportunity. That's the reason why, if you understand, beloved ones, that God does not give you sickness. One thing that I've learned is that with Job, there was a day when the Bible says the sons of God came together and 
the devil decided to clear his ugly head in that conversation. Mm. Said to God, he says, does Job fear you for nothing? And God says, all right, well, see if you want to do that, what I'll do. Satan said to him, remove the hedge from around Job. Mm. And I guarantee you, the minute that you remove that hedge, he's going to curse you before your face. But it's so good to know that there are times when God can recommend you for trouble. Mm -hmm. Because when you are recommended for trouble, it's because God knows you're going to stand the test. And even though you're batted on every side, you're going to come through as a victor. Yes. And so the Bible says that when God removed the hedge from Job, Satan went straight in and attacked. And watch what happened. The Bible said that they... The, 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 the Sabaeans came in and they took his livestock and killed them all and not one of them had escaped. And then just as he was finishing that news, another man came and told him that all of his livestock had been taken and they were killed. And then all of a sudden, the next thing he knew, somebody was running in the room and says, your sons and your daughters were all making merry in one of your son's houses. And wind came and blew over the house and all of them are dead. That those news gets to Job and Job stands there and he accepts the news but what I love about Job in this particular point, he does two things. He shaves his head which is natural according to custom. He rents his garments which is natural according to custom. But then the next thing he does is he worships. Amen. What do you do when trouble comes and you don't know how to face trouble? Sometimes you're going to have to mourn. Sometimes you're going to have to weep. But one thing I want to remind you is as long as you know how to worship, you'll be able to get through anything. So in this particular text, I look at this text and Paul is talking about these earthen vessels, and if you look at an earthen vessel, it was mixed with, it was a dirt mixed with water to make a clay. And in those times, what they would do is that they would hide precious things inside this clay. They would hide it so that it could not be retrieved unless it was broken. You had to break the jar to get the contents from the inside. But what he does, he says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels, which then means then in our earthly bodies, there is a treasure we have. I'm so thankful that we have this treasure because, beloved ones, if you understand that we were Gentile dogs and sorcerers, we were far from the commonwealth of Israel, we were not ones that were part of the promise. But we have been engrafted in because of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And not only that, but because of the blood of Jesus, I now have access to his hand and to his heart. And so because I have access to his hand and his heart, there is a treasure that he has imparted into us as believers. And we ought to be grateful for the power of the Holy Ghost. And I'm sorry because we are realizing now that there are churches that do not believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. But the reality is, I'm going to tell you according to the scriptures, the Bible says that the Holy Ghost is real. Yes. There is evidence to prove that the Holy Ghost is real. And I can imagine and I can identify and I can agree with Minister Jordan that over the 12 years of this ministry, the power of the Holy Ghost has been evident amongst these people. Amen. We have seen miracles happen. We have seen deliverance happen. And the only reason why that has happened is because the power of the Holy Ghost resides in this place. Amen. So I understand this, beloved ones, that even though we talk about the church being the building, I want to dispel that theory because we as the people of God are the church. Amen. So then because we are the church and we have been invested and given this treasure, we are the ones that God has given power to, to be able to do things in the earth. Notice this, it says that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. 
So in reality, beloved ones, one of the things that we must realize is that anything that God uses us to do, it is not us that has done it, but we must give the glory back to God. The only reason why this ministry has stood for 12 years is not because of a pastor. It is not because of the brethren. It is because of God. Amen. And I realize, beloved, that in this time and day and age, we have preachers and pastors who are talking about the church belongs to me. It's my church. It is my people and it's my offering. But the reality of it is I don't care what you want to say. The scripture said that it was when Jesus said upon this rock, I build my church. And as long as it is his church, then it means that the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. And so then, because then the church is alive and well, and because the, the gates of hell cannot prevail against it, that does not stop the church from going through trouble. That does not stop the church from going through tribulation. And I can imagine over the 12 years of this ministry being in, in, in progress, I can imagine that it has gone through its fair share of trouble. Fair share. I can imagine that there are people who said that they were going to stay and they left. I can imagine that there were people that said that they were going to hold up the pastor's hands. But then they left him by himself. But the reality is, if the church was built on Pastor Andre's sins, then the, the church would not have lasted 12 minutes. But the only reason why it has gone to 12 years is because it was built on the foundation wow. of God. Hallelujah. So then it teaches us then, it goes further on to say that we are troubled on every side, yes. yet we are not distressed. We are perplexed, but we are not in despair. We are persecuted, but we are not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. What I love about this particular text is this. That when it says that we have been cast down, you are not just some, you have not been put down, you have been thrown down. Mm. And the intent is to damage you, the intent is to cause harm, the intent is to do something to you, to hurt you. And I can imagine that if we look at our own Christian journey, things have happened to us that have hurt us. But I'm so grateful that even though I have been cast down at times, I am not destroyed because I'm still standing by the grace of God. Even though I've had my fair share of difficulty and I've had to be persecuted, I'm so grateful that I'm not forsaken. I'm so glad that even though I was troubled on every side, I'm not distressed. And even though I've been perplexed at times, I've been confused, but I'm not in despair because there is a treasure inside of me that is not of myself, but it is of God. I understand this, beloved ones, that anything that lasts as long as 12 years, you ought to be thankful that God has kept it for so long. I have seen situations where people have started churches and churches have not lasted 10 weeks, it's not lasted 9 weeks, it's not lasted 12 days. But can I say that it ought to be a reason for the Bilston Church to thank God that they have lasted 12 years because the reality is if God had not been on your side, where on earth would you be? If God had not upheld you with his strong right hand, what would you be? Where would you be? What would you be doing? The reality is, beloved ones, I oftentimes say this, that when we look in the COVID-19 pandemic, we oftentimes look and see that buildings and businesses closed. Yes. We looked at the fact that the school system closed. We looked at various different churches that closed. Yes. But when you can make it through a COVID pandemic and still be on the other oh, side of it, yeah. and you're still open and you're still able to come in and praise God, that is a reason to give God the glory. And so I understand now, whenever we walk through the doors of the building, it should be a reason for us to come into the house of God with praise on our lips. Because the reality is, if we showed up tonight and the door was closed, we would have nowhere to worship. We would have to worship outside. But I thank God that he has provided a place for us to come and to congregate and to magnify his name. But can I advise you this? If they take away all of the chairs, if they take away the key from the church, if they take away our access, can I tell you that the church is still alive? Even if they stop us from coming together and congregating, the church is still alive. 
if we have no music, if we have no drums or organ, the church is still alive. If we can't stand behind podiums, the church is still alive. Because the church is not the building, it is not the chairs, it's not the organ, it's not the drums, the church is in me. And what I want you to understand that as long as we stand against the wiles of the devil, the church cannot be defeated. As long as we understand, yes, we will be fought, but as long as you understand that absolutely no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that is rise up against you shall be condemned. As long as you understand that and you live up according to the word of God, you don't have to worry about what comes against you because the reality is no matter what comes my way, I know that my life is in the hands of God. And so he says, we are troubled on every side, it's not stressed. We're, we're perplexed, but we're not in despair. We're persecuted, but we're not, we're not cast, we're not forsaken. We're cast down, but we're not destroyed. And he says, always bearing about in the body, the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Can I tell you, beloved? One of the things that I love about the scripture is this, that when we look at in, I believe it in St. John where it talked about the crucifixion of Jesus talked about when Jesus was on the cross there was a prophecy that was said many, how many years before Jesus actually even died on the cross the actual prophecy was not one bone of his body will be broken uh, so when it got to the stage now in, in St. John where we are reading about the crucifixion Notice this, that they come to Jesus, they go to him, it was their custom, that if after a short period you had not died by crucifixion, that they were to come and they were to come and break your bones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were going to do that because if you broke your bones, you would then be in a lower position and it would be harder for you to breathe. But well, watch this, they came to the ones on either side of Jesus and broke their bones, but because the prophecy had to be fulfilled, they came to Jesus and Jesus they didn't touch him, they did not touch his bones because he was already dead. Uh -huh. Why am I telling you this? Because the reality is, remember, Jesus came for one reason only and that was to fulfill the plan of God and that was to die and that was it. That's one of the reasons why I'm so glad when he was on the cross, he said, it is finished. So they didn't have to come and break his bones. The prophecy had to be fulfilled. And the only reason why we are still standing is that there has been some prophecies that have been placed over our life. The only reason why you and I are still here is because the word has to come to pass. No matter what is going on in your life, the word has to come to pass. And so I understand Jesus is on the cross. They did not, bear, they did not break his bones because the reality he was already dead. But this is what I love about him. This is the thing. Jesus, not his bones actually at all were broken. There are 206 bones in the body and not one of the bones was broken. Can I teach you this? Beloved ones, any time you break a bone, you'll notice that it's difficult for that bone to come back to life unless you have a good calcium in your system. Yeah, right. Is that right? Amen. So what I'm saying this is, why, why I say this, this is what I love. They did not break Jesus' bones because the prophecy had said that no bones was going to be broken. But I look at it in my own internal life. Because the reality is there have been some things that were said to break my bones. And I'm not talking about a natural bone. I'm not talking about my tibia or my fibia or whatever you want to call it. I'm talking about my spiritual bones. Because if you understand that the bones give the body structure. And if you break the bones then the body loses its structure. And I know that the devil over the past how many years of my life has said things to break my bones. He has said things to destroy my structure. And if we talk about that, this church here, there, there's been so many things that have probably been said to break this church down. But there is a prophecy over the church. You can't break the bones of the people of God. You can't break us because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So the reality is this, beloved. When we talk about the fact that you cannot break his bones, I look at myself and I said, because the bones give the body structure, what I love is this. The fact is, every time that the enemy has tried to come up against me, every time the enemy has tried to break me down, sometimes if we, not, if 
we're not careful, we will allow ourselves to be broken by the very lies of the devil. If you're not careful, you will allow the enemy to come and run rampant in your life. But this is one of the reasons that I remember that I have a treasure in this earthen vessel. So then whenever trouble and trials come upon me, I have to then grab for that treasure. And let the enemy know that no weapon that is formed against me will prosper. So every time he comes against me with sickness, I'm going to grab that treasure and say he was wounded for my transgression. And he was bruised for my iniquity. And the chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. And I've come to tell this church that as for you being here 12 years, there has been some things you have probably gone through. But I've come to tell you you're not broken. The fact that you're still alive and you're still kicking today is because of the fact that you're not broken. You want to praise God because the reality is everything that the devil tried, God broke it down and the devil could not prosper because there is something in you that is greater than what's outside of you. Every time you fight the enemy, the enemy has to come with all kinds of stuff. But what I love is that God has given you enough power to be able to trample on serpents and scorpions if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm you. Uh, you. You understand that you have power on the inside of you. You're not just any of anybody. We are the church of the living God. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against us. So no matter what the enemy tries and no matter what the stunts that the enemy may pull, the church will survive. The church has to survive. Watch this, beloved. If the church, if they take me out, can I tell you that the church is still alive? If they take all of us out, the church is still alive. Because I thank God that the church is not based upon who your head is. It's not based upon what the name over your sign is. It does, as long as you know that Jesus is Lord, and as long as you know that he's the head of the church, that's when you understand that upon him, the church was built. That's the reason why they called him the chief cornerstone. That's the reason why they said that he was a stone that the builders rejected. But he became the head of the corner. And upon that rock, I have been built. So you know what? Let the enemy come with his darts. Let him come with his snipers. Let him come with his guns. Let him come with his fight. But the church will survive. If he comes with sickness, the church will survive. If he comes with financial hardship, the church will survive. If he comes with difficulty on the left and the right, the church will survive. I've got anybody in here that will agree with me and let the enemy know that no matter what you try, the church will survive. The church has been built at last and no matter what you do, you can try as much as you want. But the church has been built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you this story and then I'm going to my seat. I was told of the story as a child of the three little pigs. One built his house out of straw. And he built his house on the straw, and the big bad wolf came and said, Little pig, little pig, let me in. He said, Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. He said, Okay, well, I'll huff and I will puff, and I'm going to blow your house down. He blew down the house and he ate the little pig. He went to the next little pig, and the next little pig built his house out of sticks. When he built the house out of sticks, the wolf went to him and said, Little pig, let me come in. He said, Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. He said, Okay, well, I'm going to huff and I'm going to puff. Okay. 
make it. No matter what the enemy tries, we are going to make it. As long as Jesus is on our side, we will make it. Do me a favor, high five somebody and tell them, the Lord is on your side. The Lord is on your side. And as long as he's on your side, no devil can touch you. No witch can touch you. Let the witch cast a spell. Let the woman hit you. Let the devil try to run rampant. But as long as Jesus is in the ship, we can smile at the storm. And come to tell you that we are going to sail on. Though the storms rage, we're going to sail on. Though the breakers may dash and the pebbles may roll, we're going to hold on. Though the storms of life are raging, we're going to hold on. Let the shovel all around.
Let us stand, everybody. Stand, amen. We're going to pray. Glory to God. Amen. If there is one that we can pray with, amen. Pray with you or pray for you. Amen. Please come, amen. We'll pray with you. And we'll pray for you. Hallelujah! Alas and my Savior lead. And in my sovereign land, would he Jesus, cover your people, 
as your son stand at the altar. You know what he needs. You know what he desires. I pray that you will go and meet him at his point of need. Bless your people everywhere. Thank you for those that have journeyed from far. Thank you for those that have journeyed from here. And as we are about to leave from this place, but never from your presence, go with us. Hallelujah. Be with us until we meet again at the appointed time. We thank you and we give you the glory today. Oh God, as this is this planned that we hope to meet, if it is your will, on tomorrow morning, on tomorrow afternoon, I pray that you will cover your people in your blood. Draw your people back from the north, the south, the east, and the west. In the name of Jesus, where they are coming from, I pray, God, that you will bring them in with a heart of thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus, we will bless your name and we will honor your name. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love as your people will gather to worship on tomorrow. I pray God that you will be with each and every one in their respective assemblies. Let your power be felt. Let your presence be known. Save and sanctify. Fill with the Holy Ghost. Even the baptism on tomorrow morning at Dudley Road. I pray God that you will trouble the water in the name of Jesus. That even the souls that they have, they will be more so added in the name of Jesus. The baptism tomorrow evening over the hilltop. I pray God that you will again will trouble the water in the name of Jesus. Let souls be born and one for your kingdom. We thank you and we give you the praise, the honor and the glory. Come on, send the blood. Keep us. Oh God, protect us. Protect our vehicles from mechanical failure. In the name of Jesus, every accident and danger seen and unseen. We rebuke and remove and discharge. Thank you for complete victory. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for answering us. We give you the glory and we give you the praise. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. God's people say, Amen. Clap your hands and see you in the praise. Come on. Come on. I got your hands. Great things in store for you. Look at neighbor say, Great things. God has so many great things in store for me. Can't you see? God has so many great things in store for me. Can't you see? Can't you see? I'm glad that God has many great things in store for me. Can't you see? 